We're standing today on the corner of Columbus Avenue and Berkeley Street in front of a publishing house, which was probably one of the most prominent publishing houses in the 1890s. It published a magazine known as The Youth's Companion. Hi, I'm Todd Foreman, and welcome to Hubscapes. Hi, I'm Todd Foreman and welcome to Hubscapes. We're standing today on the corner of Columbus Avenue and Berkeley Street in front of a publishing house which was probably one of the most prominent publishing houses in the 1890s. It published a magazine known as The Youth's Companion. With a circulation of over 500,000, The Youth's Companion went to almost every child in the United States. It was kind of a combination of the Reader's Digest and My Weekly Reader. The year was 1892, and they had hired an assistant editor by the name of Francis Bellamy, who was well known in Boston as a Baptist minister. He was socially prominent, but he wasn't quite as socially prominent as his first cousin, Edward Bellamy. And when I say socially prominent, I mean in the political sense of the word. They were socialists. As a matter of fact, Edward Bellamy had written one of the most widely read social tracts of the 19th century, looking backwards. But the contribution of his cousin Francis in this building would be far more far-reaching. The year was 1892, and they had decided to celebrate the 400th anniversary of Columbus discovering America. And Francis Bellamy had written a little recitation in the Youth Companion for every youth in America to recite on that special day, Columbus Day, 1892. Maybe you remember what he wrote. Francis Bellamy, in this building, proposed that every child in the United States on that day would recite this, I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And there you have it, one of America's crown jewels, up there with the Gettysburg Address and the Declaration of Independence. Only twice in its history has the Pledge of Allegiance been changed and both times it took acts of Congress. In 1923, the more pompous sounding of the United States of America was added, but it took the fear of nuclear war during the Eisenhower administration to put the fear of God into the Pledge of Allegiance. Here is a copy of the Use Companion from September 1892. Let me read you what Francis Bellamy instructed. At a signal from the principal, the pupils in ordered ranks, hand at the side, face the flag. Another signal is given. Every pupil gives the flag a military salute. Right hand lifted, palm downward, to align with the forehead and close to it. Then all shall repeat, I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At the words, to my flag, the right hand is extended gracefully, palm upward towards the flag, and remains at that gesture till the end of the affirmation whereupon all hands immediately drop to the side. Then still standing, as the instruments strike a chord, they will sing, My Country, Tis of Thee, also written in Boston. And there you have it, socialist doctrine with a fascist twist. Well, that's Boston for you. I'm Todd Foreman for Hubscapes. See you on the trail.